Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of this chapter. Today we're going to continue with the controllers of our robot arm, so let's get to it. This is where we left off last time, I'm just going to say real quick, and um, today we're going to be adding the controllers that are going to be moving the joints that, at the end of the day, will be moving, of course, the geometry. So, controllers uh, are just curves. We're going to find them here, create nerves, primitives, and it's a circle. I'm actually going to added here to my shelf because we're going to be using quite a bit and controllers are just curves that we use and the reason why we use curves is because they're easy to select they're easy to see and we can very easily turn them on and off whenever we want to show just the geometry or just the bones or just the character so this will never be exported to unreal or unity they will never be seen they're just here to facilitate the movement of the joints because again trying to select the joints here as you can see sometimes we select the geometry and it's a little bit difficult to find them so curves and controllers are going to be really really helpful for that and in the same way that we have this hierarchy of uh, controllers here we need to create a hierarchy of uh, controllers that follow the same sort of a uh, pattern so i'm going to create my first controller and this i'm going to make it really big i'm going to freeze the transformations i'm going to call this robot arm root control and this control as the name implies will of course control the root bone so now i don't need to select the root bone because I'm going to be selecting this controller to make sure that everything works. Now, before we start connecting things, I usually like to uh, build the whole skeleton of controllers, make sure that the skeleton of controllers works properly, and then we are going to be uh, moving them uh, to where they need to be. So I'm going to duplicate this curve, control D, and I'm going to snap it to the next bone. Let's turn off the geometry for now. So I'm going to snap it to the next bone. To turn off the geometry, remember Alt 2. It's a very quick way to turn off the geometry. So Alt 2. And uh, I'm just going to snap it and scale it down a little bit to a like usable size. Now, one of the cool things about controllers is that you can actually deform them here on the control vertex. I'm just going to right click, select control vertex, grab this control vertex and just move them up. And you can see that we create this like fancy controller that has a little bit of a, of a nice shape. And since we move the controllers, nothing here is uh, modified. Now, since both of these two elements are oriented to the world, I can very easily freeze the transformations, and that's fine, because they're going to be sharing the same uh, rotation axis, which is very important. I'm going to grab this guy again, Control d snap it to the next bone, right there, scale it so that it uh, goes closer to what it's supposed to move, so something like this. We always want controllers to be easy to select, so don't make them super small or super tight there. Just give them enough room, something like this. And again, since this one is rotated in the exact same way as the rest of them, I'm just going to hit Phrase Transformation and that's going to be fine. It's very important that the curves are clean because these are the ones that animators are going to be animating. So that's why we're cleaning this up. Now, the problem is going to come with this following curves, like this guy and this guy. This guy and this guy, or the, the, the other two guys over here, those are easy because they're, again, uh, in the same direction as the, as the rest of them. Uh, but these two guys have a different rotation. So I'm going to show you a little trick that we're going to be using quite a bit to create a proper orientation for the curve. I am going to create a curve and immediately I'm going to control G. I'm going to group it. Okay. So this group, now I want this group to, to uh, pretty much uh, make a jump and go all the way over here to this joint. So I'm going to select the joint driver, select the group driven, and I'm going to say constraint parent without maintain offset. So when we turn off maintain offset, what's going to happen is this group is going to jump to the location of this bone and it's going to orient itself in the rotation that the bone has. So I'm going to hit apply and you can see how the curve very nicely orients it or it has changed its orientation so that it fits the proper orientation of the joint. That's exactly all we need. Now, we don't need the group anymore or the, the orient, so I'm just going to delete it and we have the curve right here. The only problem with this curve, as you can see, is that it's in a very weird position. It's, it's going to be a little bit difficult to select. Here's where, again, the uh, controlled vertices come, in, come into place. So I'm just going to isolate the curve real quick here. Just go select the curve, which is very important. It's clean. The curve is completely clean. That's super, super important. I'm going to isolate it, select all the controlled vertices, press the letter E, keep it pressed, and just make sure that the screen rotate is set to on, and just rotate this so that it's completely flat like this. And now we can scale it without any fear of modifying the values because when we modify the control verdicts, the values do not change. So that way we can create this very nice little uh, element that when we rotate, we know it's going to rotate in the exact same orientation that the bone has. So I'm going to select this group. I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to select this bone, the next group, 
I'm going to say constraint parent again. And as you can see, the curve is completely clean, but it's positioned and oriented in the exact same way as the, um, as the bone, which is what we're looking for. The constraint we don't need anymore. Now, technically, we should be doing that for every single one of them. So technically, we should have a group on each one of them. I, I am going to add it just to just to keep it clean and make sure that we're doing things the proper way. So every single curve will have a group that's going to move it and, and control it. And now, for instance, I can grab like this guy again, grab the group, control D. And this guy has the same orientation as the world. So I'm just going to snap it. Snap it to the bone right there because it, again, it's the same orientation. And if we want to scale it, we can scale the group. One of the great advantages of these groups is that they can save a lot of information. And since we're not going to be accessing them, the, we're not, the animator is not going to be able to modify them. We can keep them uh, exactly like that. We don't need to freeze transformation. We don't need to do anything because the curve, as you can see, is completely clean. So now oh, we have this. Now this one, I do want to uh, move it as well because it's, it's supposed to be a, a rotation. So I'm just going to rotate it so that it's on this axis. There we go. So I know that when I select this guy, and again, I rotate on the x-axis, this whole thing is going to rotate nicely. Uh, let's grab the group again. Not that one. Let's grab, like, uh, this group. Control D, and we're going to, again, snap it now to the head of the of the little uh, fingers. So we go there. Oop. Now, the group, again, remember the group, we can scale the group. We cannot scale the curve because the curve needs to remain clean. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. One of the ways you're going to know if you're doing things right, if you check your curves, all of your curves should be oriented in the way that the bone is oriented and it should keep its transformations completely clean. That's super important. I haven't changed the names just yet. We're going to do that uh, shortly. So here again, grab the group. We can make it a little bit smaller. That's fine. Now for this one, since they have a special orientation, I'm going to do the same trick that I did before. I'm going to create a new curve, control D, sorry, uh, control G to group it. And then I'm going to grab the bone the group, and I'm going to say constraint parent. That way the, the curve jumps over there and that's completely fine. One thing you can do actually is you can grab this curve and when we created the curve, the curve is set to a normal of Y. If we turn that off and set to X, it should be aligned to the to the way that the, that the curve is supposed to be aligned. Now here again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab all of these control vertices, make them smaller. And you can go fancy with this. For instance, I can grab like, let's say this guys and this guys. And I can create like a like a little like arrow shape. And since we're just modifying the, the vertices, that's completely fine. I guess it's not, it's not going to affect the curvature because the rotation of the curvature is exactly the same. You can even uh, like move these guys out of the of the axis like this. So it's a little bit easier to, to control like there. So that way an animator is going to be very, it, it will be very easy to select this guy and then just move it. And it's going to do the exact same thing. So now uh, what I'm going to do is this group, I'm going to delete the constraint. We don't need it anymore. Make sure my curve is clean. Perfect. It is clean. Grab the group, duplicate the group, grab the bone, the new group, and say constraint parent. And you can see that it's going to go exactly where it needs to be on the proper orientation. The constraint, we don't need it anymore. We duplicate the group, grab the last bone, this one right here, grab the group, constraint parent, and again, delete the constraint, and there we go. So now we have three little arrows that are going to be very easy to select. And when we select all of these three little arrows and we turn them, they're going to turn in the exact same way. So as you can see, they share the exact same orientation as the bones. And the reason why they change the ex or they share the ex same exact orientation is thanks to the constraints that we did. Because when you do a constraint, you inherit the direct connection that you're um, applying there. So now all of our controllers are good. It's time that we clean them up because they're a complete mess right now. So I'm going to call this um, robot arm finger C control. And this is going to be finger C control group. And then this one is going to be oops, robot arm finger B control. And this is going to be finger robot B control. Well, that's control group and control. And then this is going to be finger A control. And this is going to be finger A control group. Make sure that everything, like the naming convention, should be consistent. Now, this one is the robot arm head 
control. And this is head control group. This is the arm. So this is going to be arm C control. And of course, it's going to be arm C control group. Just copy this. It's going to be control B. This will be control A. And then we can just copy this, paste here, leave the control name. Uh, this is the uh, that is the root it seems oh wait did I messed up I think I messed up <laughs> I think I messed up so that's the head that's fine I was not looking at the things so yeah so this is not the this is uh, well this is base so I'm just gonna change this to base very important to look at it I was under the impression that the groups were in order but they were not so uh, this is base a A. This is the root control. That's fine. So this is going to be root control uh, group. And finally, these guys are the arms. So let's just copy the arm. Uh, so this is arm B. And I would guess this is arm A. Almost there. Almost there. I know this is a little bit... Uh, Time consuming, but I'm, I want to make sure that everything is here and I don't want to skip any any step for you guys. There we go. So now all of our controllers are properly named and they're properly uh, positioned. The only problem is that they're not properly connected. So if I were to move the root joint, you can see that nothing is following it. So it's very important that things are parented in the exact same way that the joints are parented. So in this same structure, we need to have this one right here. So I'm going to grab all of the groups from the fingers and all of them are going to be controlled or parented to the controller of the head. So that when we move the controller of the head, like this, all of the fingers follow. Got it? And then the group of the head is going to be to the arm C. The group of the arm C is going to be to the to the controller of the of B. So as you can see, we're going to have, instead of having just like pure controllers or pure groups, it's going to be one and one. And, and we're going to have this very nice hierarchy. Okay, careful here because I was doing again the same mistake. So the arm C to the arm B controller, and the arm B group to the arm A controller, and then the arm A group to the base B controller, and then the base B group to the base A controller, and finally the base A controller to the C to the root controller. Okay, so if we see the, the full hierarchy, we're gonna get this. And this is where people start getting scared because when, whenever you see a rig and you open the outline, you see all of these connections, you're like, whoa, what the hell is going on here, right? But hopefully with this little exercise that we're doing here, you can understand that it's actually not that difficult. It's, it's just following the the basic uh, situation of the or the basic um, movement. And if we were to move the main group here, mm, that's weird. Oh, here, there we go rookie mistake. So now if we grab, move this guy, the whole rig moves with it, right? Because this controller is controlling everything else. So very, it's very important that the whole chain follows uh, everything properly. And again, it's very important that you check each individual curve and you need to make sure that the curves are clean. Okay, if you have any transformation or something in the curves, that means you messed something up and you need to go back and check where you forgot to add a group or delete a constraint or something because the curves, these are the curves that the animators or that we are going to be using and they need to be clean, completely clean. The groups can be dirty. We have a lot of information on the groups, that's fine. Groups we're never going to see. The important things are the curves right here, okay? Now we're going to jump onto the final part, which is making sure that when we uh, move things, everything moves uh, with it, right? So now we have our hierarchy of curves, we have our controllers, and we have our geometry. The, the bones are already connected to the geometry, so when we move a bone, everything moves. But if we move a curb, the bones are not moving, so we need to connect the curves or the controllers to the bones. And it's going to be super, super easy. I'm going to select the, the curb that I want to uh, use as a controller, the driver. And then the driven, which in this case is the bone. Let's turn off this for a second. So driver, driven. And in this case, the first one's going to be a parent constraint. And we're going to keep, we can keep maintain offset on or off. It's It should be the same because we are not moving anything. And now the bone, as you can see, 
we check the, the rotation here, the bone is constrained. So wherever I move this thing, everything is going to follow. Okay. So for this one, we're going to do only, we don't need a parent constraint. We only need an orient constraint. So we're going to say constraint, orient constraint. This one, same thing. So curve, bone, constraint, orient constraint. 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 Curve, bone, G to repeat the last action. Control, uh, controller, bone, G, controller, bone, and G. And there we go. So now every single curve is connected to its specific bone. And if we move a controller, the bones are going to move. Okay. Now, how do we test it? Of course, we need to check the geometry. If we grab, for instance, the root bone, <coughs> sorry, if we grab the root bone and we move it, everything is going to move because this is the only bone that had a parent constraint because it has movement and orientation or rotation. Everything else only has rotation. So it's going to be moving here and rotating. Perfect. Now, this guy, if we move it, nothing happens. But if we rotate it, the whole thing rotates. This thing is the same thing. If we move it, nothing happens. But if we rotate, it rotates. Same thing for this guy. We're going to have rotation. This guy, we're going to have rotation. This guy, we're going to have rotation. This guy, we're going to have rotation. And finally, if we grab our three little arrows here and we rotate at the same time, we're going to get this very nice effect. Okay, so our connections are working properly. You can see now all of the bones have all of these constraints that are making this uh, as a, it's, it's changing the whole thing, right? Now, to clean this up a little bit, we're going to go into the cleanup phase. Uh, but I think the, the video is running a little bit along now. So I'm going to stop it right here uh, just when we just finish the, the constraint options. And again, you can test this out. You can move these things around and you're going to be able to, to see that the whole thing is moving in the way we expect. And, and the next thing we need to do is we need to do a cleanup pass. We're going to do a cleanup pass and then we're going to do an animation test just to make sure that we're able to animate it the way we want. So, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully the information within this video was clear enough. Again, remember, the most important thing is that the curves need to be clean when we're positioning and orienting them and the constraints are going to be moving the bones. We're going to constrain the curve to the bone. Driver is the curve, driven is the bone. Check the video a couple of times if you still have questions. Try to follow it uh, step by step. I know that I sometimes go a little bit fast, but hopefully it's uh, to keep it uh, to keep it fresh, to keep it entertaining, and so that you can just go back and, and refresh it if you need to. So that's it for this one, guys, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.